My name is Lucille Yende and I'm an award-winning livestock grain and crop farmer. I'm also the director of the Yende and Partners Enterprise. Our farm is situated in Heidelberg. It is 1,064 hectares. I'm also an agricultural literacy author of a children's book. What inspired me to actually get into the farming industry was um, because I'm from a family of farmers, so farming has been in our bloodline. My grandfather as well as my father and now me, so it only made sense and it's something that I enjoyed and what I knew and um, I found my purpose. So that's how I went into it and also I looked at how the business was running. My father had come with the knowledge, um, the practical um, side of things and I wanted to come the theoretical and modern ways to better the farm. Some of the challenges that I had um, gone through, especially as a young female farmer, was um, especially also in the livestock industry is you need to over explain yourself, you need to always prove, you need to work harder than the male counterpart because it's always been seen, farming has always been seen as a male dominated and male um, industry so imagine and I mean my height doesn't even make it any better so um, you always have to work harder and you're only taken seriously once they know and see that you know what you're talking about and the number of livestock you have and um, the experience that you have so that's when you're actually taken seriously and also like we have the challenges of getting funding and land because some of these places want tangible assets and collateral so it becomes challenging so and um, that's one of the challenges but um, those are things that are there and I mean I'd like to think in other industries that are like farming that are male dominated that some would also go through the same challenges and also having to fund it from your own pocket um, is one of the challenges as I mean starting off as a young farmer that's another problem that um, farming is, is expensive so um, but yeah you it, the least you can do is start with what you have how I overcome some of these challenges is one by continuing to better my craft and upskilling myself and doing the research so that if someone comes and asks me about um, the commodities that we have on our farm, I can easily tell them from the back of my head. Um, and that shows that you are present and you know what's going on and you're not just being a front or just using it for social media. So that's one of them. And two, it's also like when you do your research, you also avoid making expensive mistakes because already if it's funded from your pocket, the last thing you want is to <laughs> make the wrong choice and the wrong mistake because you did not do the research on the seasons and the breeding seasons and what the market wants. So that has helped me a lot and also I have worked so hard to build this brand so it has now become a brand that is actually respected and um, I work with brands that I dreamt of working with when I was still very young and what my dad, the brands that he also looked up to so now they're the ones that are approaching us so with those challenges I, I looked at it as to um, not throwing a pity party. I mean, another challenge that I forgot to mention was we, we us as farmers deal with theft. I mean, our borehole pump and motto was stolen because we are right opposite of a township. Um, but it did not stop our operation. Instead, we kept going and we now looked at um, how we can better the security and how we can curb this. So that's what we did is basically go back to the drawing board and look at how um, we can look at a possible solution instead of crying over spilt milk. Um, yes, definitely there's a huge improvement and now I love how females are now taking space in the agricultural space. Um, it's, it's, it's just um, heartwarming and there is some progress. So we are getting there, although obviously it's a small shift but it's better than nothing. And the space is actually now becoming accommodating of females and they are starting to recognize us. And I mean, my father even mentioned that at the South African Agricultural Awards, the majority of the winners were actually female farmers. So that is huge. Um, and also seeing young um, black farmers is also another thing that actually uh, motivates um, us and other aspiring farmers that actually as females and as black farmers there is space and there is um, some hope in the industry. Um, I did not have any formal um, training or education. Um, 
I actually did my master. I'm actually with my master's degree in psychology and um, criminology, so it's totally out of my scope. Um, but I studied that because you know parents always want that security of a degree. So, and the only thing that intrigued my um, my my personality was studying the human mind, specifically criminal mind. But um, I did gain the practical um, skills and informal skills and knowledge from my grandfather and my father. But I was fortunate enough that um, Corteva, um, as well as Gibbs, has offered a, a, an all expense paid program for commercial farmers. So I'm one of 30 farmers that they've selected in South Africa to go through this course. Um, and this allows us, it teaches us how to like, um, do bankable business plans. We all know how expensive those are. It gives you a mentor, all paid for the whole program. Um, it started in March and it ends in, I think it ends in December, if I'm not mistaken. I stand to be corrected. But I was fortunate enough to have those um, courses and I do attend some livestock courses and I uh, am due to also attend a beekeeping course because that's another commodity that I plan to add. Um, so I basically went out of my way besides my degree and the knowledge that I received from my father um, through these short courses and um, opportunities that came landing on my plate. Um, farming teaches you a lot of patience. Um, I was very impatient and, and I'm very impulsive. <laughs> like if I want to do something now, if I decide I want to plant cucumbers, I don't even know how to, but I will do the research and I want to do it now because I'm like a dog with a bone and I won't have peace until I do it so um, farming has taught me patience that I mean you can plant it today but it takes about for instance butternut it'll take you three months so you have no other choice but to wait and that has taught me also in life in general that um, things some things are out of our control and some things are you have to wait and they require your patience right so I have learned that and I've also learned to have a backbone and to be a stronger person because also farming is a, as I mentioned is a male dominated space so you need to grow a backbone in order to and to be, you need to actually be a tough cookie you know and um, I laugh about this because my dad um, always makes mentions that oh by the way I have five brothers I'm the only girl so it's also like a weird thing that he assumes I'm also a boy um, when I have like a, a mental breakdown he's just like in the day Carl. It's like excuse me I'm a female um, so um, it's things like that that um, have shaped me that um, there is this and I am capable and um, God put me on this uh, on this field for a purpose so um, that's how it has shaped me. I'm a better person, I'm stronger, and um, I'm more patient. And I also look at the beauty of life that from putting um, a small seed into nothing comes out something so nutritious. So I'm actually contributing towards food security and feeding the nation. So luckily for me, um, it's been a family business. So we have two farms. One is in Bumalanga, which was, the, that's where my father is from and where my late grandfather used to farm. And he was mostly a livestock and a grain farmer. Then we, ac we acquired our first farm here in Joburg in Nigel, but the farm was too small for the number of livestock and the activities that we wanted to do. So we had to look for another farm. And luckily we found one close to Nigel, which is in Heidelberg in Gauteng. Um, about 45 minutes from here, from Joburg, um, Central. And um, we acquired it through the land reform and they gave us a huge farm, which is 1,064 hectares. And we are leasing the farm for 30 years and we're in the process of purchasing it. And um, what we liked about um, the farm there is that it allowed us to actually continue with our grains. It was enough grazing land and um, it also had blue gum trees. Blue gum trees are also good for like, um, if you want to go into the honey business, hence I'm um, pursuing that career also because the blue gum trees you can produce um, eucalyptus honey, which is one of the most um, amazing raw quality um, sources of honey. It's actually one of the top honeys. Um, so that's another thing that we liked. And I mean, blue gum trees with the felt fires, we use them because they don't, they are not easily inflated, um, inflammable. So trying to stop that fire, you can use those. So there's a lot that we found on our farm and those trees also, we also in the firewood business because we have a lot of those trees that are required for the firewood. So we like that we are basically, we say that we actually, it was a blessing in disguise having those issues at our first farm. And now we are here because we are literally sitting on a gold mine. Um, so yeah, uh, and the capital, my father and I basically have not received any form of funding from any government or any other business um, models. We've funded it from our own pockets. And that's another thing that I always tell farmers that, I mean, if 
you have another source of income and you want to go into farming, go for it. Like farming is, is expensive and everything needs money. Like literally me just parking on the farm two minutes before even getting out, there's already like something that they need on the farm. So having that extra income will actually, if while you wait, and I always say to people that let the government find you on the way. Don't rely um, entirely on them for the funding. So we've um, always had side other hustles to feed into the farming business until it can fully operate because we have big dreams with it and I mean we also supply the renowned current beef is down the road from our farm we supply them with um, wiener calves because we are in the beef in um, beef production industry so that helps us a lot you know and um, with the butternuts we supply some of your biggest retailers um, like an agro processing company that supplies checkers and another company that um, supplies your boxes so we would send out 600 bags of 7 kg bags um, per week or twice a week actually so we we mastered that we wanted to ensure that the farm had um, an income also the whole year round instead of just looking at the income looking at the seasonal things I always say start with what you have um, because I mean something's out of your control. I mean I don't have water but it didn't stop me from planting butternuts um, and it actually worked to my advantage and I basically planted that butternut and I used the cow manure from our kraal which is an organic fertilizer while I waited for the results because I tested the soil and cow manure is also um, helps to neutralize the soil because it's always been acidic from the maize that we've always um, planted on our land so that's another point. Um, invest in quality mentorship like you look for a quality bull because you want the certain traits and the certain um, genes and you have an end goal invest in that quality uh, mentorship because then at least your goals are aligned and you're not forced into the mentor's dreams but they are aligned with yours um, as well as doing your research as I mentioned prior also is that research you avoid making um, expensive mistakes and you will know you will master the seasons and the breeding seasons and that that way you can get your profits and you're not working at a loss. So I have two, one being my father and the other one being Dade Duncan Serapelwane. He is um, the legendary Bonsmara stud breeder and the reason why I went for him is because Bonsmaras are one of the breeds that we are also looking into branching to because it's an indigenous breed and they are actually adaptable looking at the environment, the climate change that is actually happening and he's a stud breeder and I'm also working towards becoming a stud breeder and um, actually he's actually also um, had his first production um, auction as a black person that's that's huge so I follow his footsteps and our goals are aligned and he actually accepted me with open arms and he's become my second father and um, just his journey is inspiring so that is why I have those two people that I look up to because my father started from nothing to that farm from nothing to where it is today and um, he actually recently also received um, the lifetime achievement award and I was so glad that he received his flowers while he's still alive um, and he's actually done so much. I mean, with COVID, we were fortunate enough not to even have to retrench anybody with our, any, any of our staff. So he's always been that selfless. And um, we've also opened our farm because of him to students who are doing their third year um, who need to do integrated learning in order to graduate. So that again is funded from our own pockets and we accommodate these female students because we wanted to create a safe space for them and to be able to, to, to also fulfill their dream of becoming a farmer and having a female um, mentor as well as my father who's gone through this journey before so that for me says a lot and um, I just look at how he's, he, he just runs the operation and hence I've taken over the farm and I still go to him for his guidance. So those are the two people that I look up to and um, are my sound boards. Take it easy. It's hard, um, but it's also fulfilling and it's the most peaceful, peaceful thing actually. And I'd also say that um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, there's a time and place for everything and there's a reason why you're at a certain place. So enjoy the moment. Um, and all, all the other things will fall into place. I think sometimes we put so much pressure and also pressure from social media and your peers um, that put you on a certain scale or bar that you end up losing yourself. So stay grounded and focus on your, your operation and your goals and dreams.
Well, I think I have two actually. One is usually when the lambs and kids um, are born and um, we usually not really separate them from their moms but when we when we allow the moms to also go and graze and have their food um, so the little lambs and kids sometimes cannot tell that you're not the mother so they end up following you and start sickling on your clothes and I find that it's actually the cutest thing that they do I mean one of my shoelaces here guys is, has been chowed by them that's why it looks a bit weird and another one was actually while well, we were drawing blood from one of the cows and we couldn't get the blood from the tail I had to get it from on its lower abdo um, abdomen and that's when I realized that cows don't kick backwards, they actually kick sideways. So I was actually kicked by a cow and I couldn't, and for me it was more of, instead of the focusing on the pain, it was more of, hey, well, can't they kick sideways? And they're not backwards, okay. Definitely a cow. As a floopy, they are easy pets and easy animals, actually, if I were to have it any day. And I mean, I, they always say that I'm very biased and um, I prefer cows more than the others. Loki, yes, because I mean, cows, as long as you look after them, they'll look after you too. And they eat in the morning, they go and graze, they come back, they mind their own business, like as shopi, unless you disturb them. An ostrich. I'm very short, so I've always wanted to be tall, and I like how tall it is. And um, I like ostrich meat, and I always find people who actually farm with ostriches because they are ostrich farmers, find them. I used to think they were odd, but I mean, um, it's, it's animals that I would like to explore one day. Um, and as for a flower, I would look at a sunflower because um, one, the scale of a sunflower looking at the tonnage is very high and I like to put myself on a high pedestal <laughs> and um, I like flowers. Um, so. And they are beautiful to look at and I mean a sunflower you can use it as a flower to make someone's day and you can also make oil and I mean we all know how expensive oil is. So it's, it's a plant that gives back to you in many ways and um, has high returns. Maybe the ear piercing too because one, you get to put your brand, this animal, this beautiful big animal and small animal gets to walk around with your brand. And it's like, you know, even with us, when I wear a t-shirt that has our brand, I, I wear it with my chest out and proudly. So imagine like when someone sees how beautiful and full and big your, your livestock is and it has your brand on it. It's, it also brings you pride and it motivates you. So that is my favorite because then once you've bought it, you tag it, it's now yours and everyone compliments it and I mean it's 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 a proud moment. That we can actually do it and um, I mean the average age for an average farmer is about 60 or 65. Um, so looking at me I mean I'm, I'm 27 but I already run an enterprise of this size and on such a, a large piece of land. Um, hence I always make it known my age so that people can understand that it is possible and as a female farmer um, you can do it and you can actually be taken seriously and I mean you have all the people coming to you who have been farming for years and asking for advice on their livestock or the crops so and I sit and I'm just like clearly there's something that I'm doing right and clearly I'm not talking nonsense so you can do it um, as I mentioned start with what you have honestly and do your research and you're good to go.